There are five common resume myths that you can ignore because it's BS. Number one, putting the job description in white one point font within your resume itself does not automatically improve your ATS discoverability and actually risks you being denied outright if not blacklisted. For most of us in the United States, you want to avoid the CV format, which is the dual column that kind of more informally talks about your experience and on the other side sort of talks about hobbies or classes or skills and instead really just put everything in what we call single page format. Three, there are a lot of things on resumes that used to be customary that are now considered really low value, such as an objective, a professional summary, um, hobby section, volunteer work, interests, references, um, everything really should be condensed into four areas. Um, who you are and your email links and whatnot, your professional experience, skills, and education. Four, resumes do not have to meet a page requirement. So anyone that says resume should be one page or under is lying to you. Anyone that says resume should be more than two pages is lying to you. Resumes should be anywhere between one to two pages. Generally speaking, if someone's resume goes up to third pages, of course, you could still put content there, but you're just kind of losing the, reader, the reader's attention. But there's not going to be any disqualification for you doing so. Finally, despite everyone trying to bring in these fun, new, innovative styles, reverse chronological order is still going to be your best bet. So there's a few people that have tried to like, um, in they'll put in their resume, they put in their title, and they put in the sections of areas of what they've done. So it'll be like customer service, marketing communications, publishing, and then they'll put in like a few bullets from each of their roles. This is extraordinarily confusing to both recruiters and hiring managers. Just stick to reverse chronology.